Good evening. It's Thursday 29th uh, and it's seven minutes past six. What a right day today. Oh, by the way, I'm a funeral director in Sheffield. Just in case you didn't know, you're just flicking through these channels. Uh, yeah, it's not been the best of days. I don't know if you can remember anybody that's been watching my channel. I did an arrangement for a gentleman in Chesterfield, a pre-wishers. I met Ern, uh, and he told us all his wishes a couple of weeks since what he wanted before he died. Ern were at end of life, and it were in a meeting that I'll probably never, ever forget. He were a lovely bus driver in London. Oh, that must have been some job that I've only ever drove in London a few times it's a nightmare I can't imagine driving a bus down there because them cockneys bloody hell they ain't got a clue how to drive they don't like us up here uh, courteous and civilised there's any cockneys watching I'm only kidding anyway back to Ernest passed away uh, and he's in our care so I've been today to meet his family who are just amazing uh, and it were a, quite a difficult arrangement actually but they showed me a picture of him well loads of pictures but on this collage I think they call them they were one of a little lad about seven stood holding a ball under his arm with long short trousers on uh, and it were lovely and she says that were him amazing absolutely amazing so anyway I'm looking after him now uh, right nice guy and then we've had loads of arrangements I've had six arrangements I've just finished one and in between me arrangements I've had a funeral that I had to attend uh, I wanted to go on a last out of our community same age as me, born in 1964. Life's just shit, innit? We had a young lass called Chloe, her mum's passed away. She worked at a school in our community. She's only young, younger than me. She's passed away and her daughter's been in today, Chloe. That lass is a credit to everybody, all family, not just her mum and dad. She is so strong, it's unreal. And she's been in today and dressed her mum with my wife, Cheryl. Cheryl used to go to school with her mum. So it's really, really Cheryl, uh, this last dying. Uh, so that's not been good. And just now I've been to visit a family. Well, not a family, because he ain't got a family. A gentleman who was 95 year old and we're looking after his wife. They've been married for 67 and a half years, he's been telling me. Can't imagine that, can they? To be married for 67 and a half years. They met at a dance and he asked her to dance and she says, Oh, I'm mine as well. And she kept standing on his tours. He says, We're supposed to be dancing, not kicking each other. Uh, lovely he ain't got no family at all uh, he's got a friend called Liz and we looked after Liz's husband just a year since almost just coming up to a year ago and she's befriended this gentleman and his wife and during Covid Liz has been going shopping for him and looking after him absolute diamond of a lass really uh, she's helping him and supporting him because we are uh, he'd have nobbed her uh, unreal so it's been a little well, it's 12 minutes past 8 and I've got another arrangement to do but I'm exhausted today because from being in Chesterfield this morning at half past 9 been a taxing day really has and I've met some amazing people amazing
amazing families but then this arrangement I've just done with this old gentleman it's a different generation to them what there is today great respectful and he says you're a gentleman Michael as I were leaving and he shook me hand and I thought you know I says I'm not at all mate I says it's your generation I don't know why we become funeral directors to be truthful I get loads of people saying oh I'd love to do your job I'd love to do your job should have been doing my job at five o'clock tonight when an old gentleman at 95 opens door and breaks down and cries instantly before you even get in house and you've got to try and hold it together it's not the best job in the world I love doing it and all funeral directors love what they do that's why they become funeral directors don't matter if you work for co-op or dignity or an independent they do it for a reason they do it because they want to give that person that last bit of dignity and respect so independents don't have how can I say this without sounding a sod nearly said something else then independents don't have monopoly on care just because independence don't mean that they care more because it doesn't believe me there's some shit independent funeral directors that was only in it for money they don't want to invest they don't want to buy cars they don't want to buy have a proper mortar they just want to cream the money off of it so not all independents are fantastic and i'll get slated for that but it's true some people that work for co-op and dignity are fantastic they're absolutely amazing you got people like lynn grieverson she works for dignity that woman it's about care it's about loved ones she's cheryl's friend actually she's amazing she's absolutely fantastic she come into this industry 30 odd year ago and she did it because she's she loves it she's passionate about it so she'd have made a bloody good independent undertaker assembly actually uh, we are a doubt so i just wanted to put on today that dark clouds are always hanging over you aren't they you meet an old gentleman at 95 and you think how's he gonna go how's he gonna manage i don't know gives me some else to worry about tonight as though i ain't got enough to worry about like but i'll be thinking about him and i'll keep in touch with him and i'll keep popping into her to him and i nearly said her and then having a chat Ern, who we're looking after from chesterfield always had a smile on his face every picture that they showed me this morning of him he was smiling and i'm so proud that i'm looking after that bloke genuinely i've dressed him today he's all dressed and he's got his glasses on so he looks he looks lovely genuinely a great smile now his granddaughter's going to ride in her swimmer because I'm going to drive hers and she's going to be outside and she's going to take her on his final journey from Chesterfield to Brimington Crematorium and she'll be so honoured doing that being with her granddad something she'll never forget well 17 minutes past 10 and i can waffle on all knee but i've got another arrangement as i said to do thanks for liking this channel thanks for listening to an undertaker moaning and groaning uh, and thanks for subscribing to my channel i love it seriously because of me having depression it gets things off my chest i suppose being able to have a chat and there's probably nobody even watching or listening or liking or subscribing but in my head I just feel better so I hope you all have a brilliant night uh, and I'll probably catch you all tomorrow in fact I will catch you tomorrow 
take care everybody and if you leave me a comment i'll answer you and if you press like i'll love you and if you subscribe i might even give you a free coffin you never know do you keep watching look after yourselves everybody take care